Good afternoon, everyone. We are going to be having a lesson on building mo models of molecules. And I'm sorry I'm not here today. I am somewhere in the school in the middle of trying to deal with safety around, um, around M. M. Robinson. I'm hoping that you guys are going to be well behaved and uh, you're going to be paying attention and not fooling around. Okay, guys? Next slide. I'm hoping, um, I guess, kind of before you uh, go to the next slide, I want to make sure that everyone actually has a copy of this sheet that's been handed out. Um, so it's the sheet is called Building Models of Molecules. And you guys are going to be playing with the boxes that are like this over on the red cart. And you guys are going to be having lots of fun. Okay? So let's kind of move on. Our, why do we actually use these molecular models? Well, molecular models are used in chemistry to actually kind of see what all of these different molecules that we were talking about yesterday, they actually kind of, they're like the Lego of, um, of chemistry. So we actually kind of be able to, we get to be able to play with these cool toys today. Okay. What are the model uh, pieces represent? Well, each of these different kind of little balls that are going to be in your kits, they all actually represent different types of elements. Remember all those different elements that you guys saw over on the periodic table, right? These different elements um, could be um, represented by different colors. Uh, so in this case here, this little uh, white ball is going to be uh, hydrogen when you actually play with it. The red balls are going to be oxygen, um, and the black balls are going to be carbons, okay? Now, the really funny things in between here, right, that are kind of the, uh, in, in your kit, they're going to be kind of these um, metal springs. These actually represent the bonds, or kind of what ties in all of the different um, atoms of the elements together with all the other elements um, within your, your uh, molecule, your compound, okay? And then each of these different balls actually have little tiny holes. And the holes represent the number of bonds that each of these elements can actually make. Okay. When we looked at the periodic table, and we all did the periodic table dealing with the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams, we noticed that a lot of the different elements have, um, they have electrons in the outer ring. And those outer ring, of course, are called the valence electrons. And some of the elements actually have only one valence electron, or two, three, four, et cetera, all the way up to eight if it's in the noble gases, or it could be two in the case of helium. Okay? And it's all the reason why we did, went through those, that Bohr-Rutherford diagrams is because we have to look at those, uh, those outer electrons, okay? Because they are going to be helping us with knowing how many bonds each of the elements can make. Okay. So we're going to be looking at, in some case, you guys look at the, in the first group, okay, so that's the first um, vertical column. You can see that the hydrogen, lithium, sodium, right, you'll have the one. The next one over, the beryllium and magnesium have two. Boron and aluminum have three. Carbon and silicon have four outer, um, outer electrons. Nitrogen and phosphorus have, um, they have five. Oxygen and sulfur have six. Fluorine and uh, chlorine have seven. And helium, Nitro, uh, neon and argon, they all have eight and they're full, right? I'm going to talk a little bit more about, you know, having full electrons. Okay, so when you have a full shell, right, all our noble gases, because they have a, a full shell, they cannot bond with other, um, with any of the other elements. They don't like hanging on with other elements. They're just by themselves, right? So we will never see a neon combined together with potassium or something like that. They're always by themselves because they have a, a full shell. So, but everything else in that periodic table can actually bond with other things. Okay, so we're going to be looking at that first column. Okay, remember these guys were the ones that we um, put in water and they actually ended up exploding. Okay, that was the hyd uh, that was the lithium and sodium. We didn't actually kind of explode hydrogen because it's a gas and I don't have any of it here. But e, all of these, the hydrogens, the lithiums, and the sodium, sodiums, they all have one electron in the outer shell. That means that that little electron in the outer shell can actually be shared with another, uh, with another element. So here's an example of my hydrogen right there. Okay, I can actually kind of get this hydrogen. Okay, this represents a hydrogen. 
it has one hole and I can get it to be able to share with, let's say for instance, another hydrogen, okay? So, because each of them have one hole, right? Each of them have one free electron on the outside, they can actually kind of bond with each other. And so this is actually what a helium gas would actually look like if you actually made it into a model. Okay? On the other side of the periodic table, right, was the fluorine and chlorines. They all had seven electrons in the outer shell. They really want to be able to have eight electrons to be able to make their shells full. So they will actually steal or take or borrow other electrons um, from elements like, like our chlorine. Sorry, the chlorine will end up taking it, for instance, the hydrogen. Okay, so let's say the chlorine is going to be the green ball. The hydrogen is here, it's the white ball. And so right now they are sharing fluorine, sorry, chlorine needs one um, electron. Hydrogen can give one electron. They both have one shared together. So there we go. This is actually, um, uh, sorry, hy hydrogen chloride, uh, which is a type of acid. Okay, so this is actually what it would look like if sodium and chlorine actually shared their electron. So I'm going to be using sodium. Okay, so let's say we're going to use sodium as being a green ball. And our chlorine is kind of being a green ball. We put them together. There we go. And we have, sorry, we have salt. Okay, sodium chloride is salt. And you can see here on the, on the picture, that's how both chlorine is going to be kind of taking that spare electron from the sodium. And then they actually bond together to be able to meet, make this neat thing. Okay, now kind of going, we end up looking at the second um, group, right? It's the beryllium magnesium. They have two outer electrons. That means that they can actually share two, um, they can actually share those two electrons with other things. Okay, on the other side, oxygen sulfur, they have, count how many they act on the outside. How many electrons do they have on the outside? Oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six electrons in the outer rings. So that means that in order for them to be able to have a full shell, they actually need two electrons, right? So there we go. So in the case when you're going to be in your models, your oxygens are going to be red, and you'll actually notice that they're going to be having two holes in them, okay? So the holes means basically they're going to be making kind of two bonds. They're going to be kind of taking somebody's... Um, electrons to be able to kind of make their shell complete. Okay, and this is what it would look like if oxygen was actually going to be kind of pairing with itself in order to be able to make an oxygen um, air. Well, so the, basically the oxygen within their air. This is what it'll end up looking like. And you can see the Bohr-Rutherford diagrams and how the two oxygens will actually kind of um, the two oxygens will actually have, they're going to be sharing electrons. There's the bond between them. Looking neat, eh? Okay. Our sodium, now in this case, it has one, two, three, four, five. It has five electrons. So five, right? If you wanted to be able to kind of get to a eight, that means that there's three spots. So in this case here, your nitrogen is going to be the green, the, the orange balls, and you can see that it's going to be having three different holes. And, okay, in order to be able to make a nitrogen gas, I'm going to be needing three springs here for the three bonds. And I'm going to be making a triple bond here, okay? Oops, triple bond. It's got three bonds right there, so triple bond, three bonds. And this is what nitrogen gas looks like, okay? So nitrogen gas, if you guys ever go to the dentist, right, you might kind of hear about nitrous oxide, which is not quite like this, but it is, it's one of those kind of nitrogen gases. In the case of nitri uh, nitrous oxide, it actually will have an oxygen molecule um, together with it. Okay, so looking on your sheet down towards the bottom, 
right? At the bottom, it's going to be telling, it's going to be asking, okay? It's going to be showing you all the different elements that you're going to be playing with today, okay? Making um, models of these, all of the, sorry, all of these different um, molecular compounds. And for hydrogen, it's going to be white. You can also see this on the screen. Hydrogen, the white one. It's only got one hole. It's only going to be having one connection to another atom. Chlorine and sodium, the green ones, okay, these ones right here, they also have one hole, and they're going to be making one connection. Your oxygen are going to be the red balls, okay, they're going to have two holes. You're going to be writing this down, okay. If you guys lost your pencil, remember the pencils are up at the front. So the oxygen. The red, it has two holes. Calcium, as you can also use this for being calcium. It also has two connections, has the two holes. Nitrogen, get a nitrogen here. Nitrogen has, it's going to be the orange. Nitrogen has three holes. And last but not least, the carbons. Okay, the carbons definitely have four holes. You can connect everything all together. Okay, now if you look at the back here, it's going to be showing you the compound that you're going to be making. And it's going to be asking you something similar to what your homework was last night. It's going to be asking you how many atoms of elements are there within this formula, the compound, the compound formula. So in the case here, the first one, it is two atoms of, what's the C again? I can't remember the C. Oh yeah, carbon. Carbon, and then there's four of this H, and of course the H is hydrogen. Okay, so we're going to be writing out two atoms of carbon, four atoms of hydrogen. The compound name is actually ethylene. Okay, and this is what the structural diagram will look like. And structural diagram is kind of like an easy diagram. So if you guys have, I'm going to be switching kind of to the to the front because I forgot to show you guys this. Right here, we have the chemical formulas, structural diagram, and a visual diagram right there. So the chemical formula is right up there. Okay, in the case of carbon dioxide, this is carbon dioxide. This is what the structural diagram will look like. There's carbon. Carbon has two links, the two bonds. And then there's two oxygens, right? So they're bonded with the carbon. And then if I end up kind of making that into a model, Get my trusty. There we go. There's my my oxygen, my carbon. Uh oh, I lost my other carbon. Here we go. There we go. Okay. So we have. Oh, it's all falling apart. So you're going to be having basically the oxygen together with the carbon, and you'll end up getting carbon dioxide. Okay. And that would actually be your um, your actual visual diagram. Okay. Or the model. So going back to your sheet right here, you guys are going to be working on putting together ethylene. That's what the structural diagram of ethylene looks like. And you guys are actually going to be using your kit to actually be able to make ethylene. Formaldehyde is your next one. Next one is your nitrogen gas, your oxygen gas, your hydrochloric acid, your calcium chloride, your salt, your sodium chloride, your methane, that's the farts right there. Okay, that's methane gas. And the last, last one is calcium carbonate, which is limestone. Okay, so have fun. Please do not be throwing things around, okay? And also, we want to kind of be changing. Make sure that they, that N2 should actually be N3. This is how I made a mistake, okay? Don't tell anyone. Anyways, good luck, guys. And I hope I can actually be able to finish off the safety check so I can actually come back and see you guys having all the fun. Once you guys are actually done making all the different models, I'm going to be putting all the different examples of the models over on the table in the back. Okay, good luck.